there's quite a lot in this um, this section. So let's get going. So one of the things is a new aero workflow. So um, what this allows you to do is um, set up aero runs and particularly where you might want to do a set of parametric runs as well, maybe angles of attack, et cetera, and do some specific post-processing using a special GUI. So when you come to the Fluent Launcher, you hit Aero here, and it will take you into a workflow. And it's particularly around these areas of, of setup, solution settings, using best practices and post-processing, where um, you'll see the big benefits. Um, so um, what you get is a reduced GUI here, which allows you to do specific things um, in aircraft speak, but you can always go back to the full GUI if ever you want. You can switch back between them. Um, and the sorts of things you can do is look at specific components. It works for both the, the density-based and the uh, pressure-based solver. You can actually um, do parametric runs. You can... Uh, make parametric plots, et cetera. You can script it with Python. So it's a, um, it, it's, it allows you to focus on basically setting up um, uh, aero simulations, which are, can either be sort of in, in the real world, or they could be a wind tunnel type domain if you're trying to, to replicate something in a wind tunnel. So um, that, I think, is, is we're going to see a few more of these come out where the GUI is really the same as the Fluent GUI, only you see restricted sets showing up while you're in this, this tool, and then you can jump out to the full capability. So if you're in this area, give it a try. There have been huge advances in the uh, density-based solver. So anybody wanting to do supersonic, hypersonic flow should, should immediately um, register the fact that they need to switch to 2022 R1. I mean, such significant um, changes. So um, one, one key thing is how fluxes are calculated on, on the far field pressure boundary. So a far field pressure boundary is like what's happening a long way from your aircraft or your rocket or whatever and there you, you you've got your conditions set and you just want them to be what they are and this new setting here um, allows you to do um, much better in certain cases here where you were getting really very poor convergence or almost divergence you, you can now um, switch to this new option and you just get monotonic convergence here uh, and that's going to be particularly the case when you've got objects, uh, strong flow interacting with, with boundaries. Um, other things. Um, so this is um, a, the ability to, to change um, the gradient operations. So um, the node-based gradient um, enhancements that were... Uh, made in the in the uh, density based solver again we're talking about um, there there was an old version there was some improvements which weren't always improvements and there's now a fully extended improvement and you can switch those on through the TUI so those are going to give you again much better behavior this is um, a very exciting development which at the moment is really designed for high-speed aero, but will we'll come more generally into the code. So there's been a focus over the last few releases about improving the way we do adaption and building in automatic tools. So, you know, how do you know whether you want to adapt on a variable, it's gradient, combination, scaled or unscaled, all these things. So there are now best practices set up for things like uh, combustion, VOF to DPM, shock capturing, 
um, with the shock, uh, shock indicator. This new one is based around the Hessian operation. And that's really just a fancy way of saying the second derivative. So what it's going to do is adapt to local solution error. So the idea is that most of these schemes have a, a leading truncation error that's going to be proportional to the second derivative. And you can identify where these second derivatives are high, and that's where you're going to have a high error. So you can go in and put your cells there. Um, and so you can start off with coarser meshes and end up with really good refinement where you need it. At the moment, this only works as a pressure, uh, working on the pressure field. Um, but the intention by the next release, hopefully, is to have this work for any variable. So it'll be more useful than just for, for, for some of these hypersonic flows, where it's fantastic at capturing both strong and weak shocks. Um, the two uh, temperature model, which is used in, in hypersonics when you go up in high temperatures and you've got thermal non-equilibrium between the different uh, modes of, of vibration energy and electronic energy, um, had these higher order uh, polynomials, these nine coefficient uh, NASA polynomials set up. Um, they weren't performing very well in the way they were used. There's been some uh, big improvements to the convergence and to the quality of the solution. And this is all enabled automatically by default. So I wouldn't be using this in a previous version. And you can see straight away there's some issues here. Um, the two temperature uh, model used to be chemistry free. And then, then there was a version where you could read in all your chemistry. It's now got a series of inbuilt chemistry sets that you can just call up, like you can call up methane air. Um, and all of these are hard coded in there now so that you get the, the species and the reaction rates all built up. So if you're doing anything around hypersonics in Earth or Martian air, uh, far field, then, then go for these. 